Can you tell me what you think made you stand out on PA admissions? Going through that process of deciding why I want to be a PA um, really helped develop my understanding about what PAs do and how they play a role with all the different other members of the healthcare team. I also had the opportunity to do a little bit of shadowing for like with an SLP. And my sister is a dietitian, so she took me to the hospital and just like let me hang out with a couple of her friends. So an SLP, uh, like a pharmacist working within a hospital setting, um, an OTPT. So really understanding the roles of all the different allied healthcare professions and all the different individuals on the healthcare team is, uh, I think, really important in the application process because it shows why you want to specifically be a PA as opposed to um, a different healthcare profession because there are some over overarching goals that are shared between all. And so I think to make your application more specific, you have to hone on in on what makes um what makes a PA unique compared to those other professions and why specifically you have those skills or have developed those skills or have been encouraged to by different uh, opportunities you've had in extracurriculars in job positions and volunteer work. And so I specifically, I made a little Excel sheet with like the CanMed roles, a list of like every volunteer job kind of, major experience that really was impactful for me and then took the time to kind of attribute those different CanMed roles, so uh, the CanMed PA roles, um, to each of those experiences. And so by doing that, um, I just had this um, base then kind of of how the different things that I had done through volunteer job, et cetera, had developed those specific rules. And that was why um, I had developed these qualities that would make me a good fit for the PA profession. And can you speak to some of those soft skills or qualities that you think make an ideal PA candidate or a really stellar practicing PA? Yeah, I think definitely the ability to work in a team is really important. Um, And to do that well, you need strong communication skills. Um, You need to be able to collaborate well with others. And it's challenging because every team you work with, sometimes you develop different skills. So I think the more opportunity you have to be in those sort of settings, and when you do encounter resistance or conflict, to really take time to consider what's working well, what didn't work well, is there something that I need to work on to further my communication with my group members who maybe think differently than me, who communicate differently than me, um, to just really be able to develop those skills and then bring those into the next experience you have and then again, take that time to self-reflect. So uh, those are kind of the things that I think help develop those soft skills Uh, and also just putting yourself in positions that maybe are a little bit uncomfortable. I think those are the opportunities that we have to grow the most uh, in those kind of skills. So maybe if you know that you're not the, the, like you struggle with um, working in a team, then maybe you want to put yourself in a group discussion forum or something you meet once a week to discuss issues and you're just working and talking with others and maybe that's a way just to to build those um, team skills or maybe you want to develop your leadership skills and then taking on a new leadership opportunity within your uh, school or within a volunteer setting that you might be working at so you think identifying what skills you're strong at which ones you're weak at and then going through the process of self-reflection is how you develop those soft skills. And can you tell us a little bit about what your uh, experiences were in undergrad when it came to work outside of the classroom? Um, Some of the experiences that really stood out to you uh, that helped you develop some of those CanMed's competencies. So leadership, professionalism, collaboration, teamwork. Um, what, What experiences helped you develop those skills? Yeah, so I really like being involved in a lot of extra things. I have to be cautious about it because I um, I like to be uh, involved in different groups and activities and challenging myself. Um, so it's definitely a balance, but I was involved in quite a few things at undergrad. And some of the things that really stick out to me that I enjoyed 
um, were some of the things that I could progress over the four years. So one of the things specifically was being on the biology club at our school. The first couple years, I was a volunteer. So I just helped with the blood drives, um, collecting individuals who were wanting to participate and then also some of the social events. And then as I went to my third year, I got on kind of like the leadership team. And then on my fourth year, I became the um, VP of the club. So uh, that progression allowed me to see different parts of the club. And I think I was able to then step into the leadership role at the end, which was neat because it just allowed for contacts with different individuals on campus, which was cool. And then just being able to organize some of the events such as um, the blood drive that we had going on. So that was something that was neat. Another thing for me um, that was kind of just a, a good outlet because it encouraged me to have a bit more balance was my first and second year I was very much involved in the running club at our school. Um, And then I had a bit of an injury, so I couldn't continue with that. But then in my last year, I was able to be a fitness instructor on campus. So being an instructor role was lots of fun, and it was something I enjoyed. So pairing something that you enjoy while also being able to develop leadership skills is really great. And then the last thing, I had a couple opportunities to um, be a uh, tutorial instructor for calculus, and then also um, like a lab prep uh, for first year chemistry. And then also I got to teach a first year chem class. So those opportunities, they really uh, encouraged my uh, passion for leading and instructing. And so I learned those things about myself through being in those roles. And then it was also just such a great balance from the demanding courses in undergrad. Yeah, so it sounds like you were really, really well-rounded. And something that I noticed actually when you were speaking was that not once did you mention that having a competitive GPA was an absolute necessity to get in. You focus more on the soft skills and these experiences and self-reflection. So it's really about being well-rounded and holistic and pursuing what you're very passionate about. Um, How did you come across these opportunities? I think coming across those opportunities is um, definitely helpful by just talking with other classmates um, because sometimes like they have different connections that you don't have. So if you're not necessarily maybe comfortable talking with like somebody who's like high up on the club themselves that you're interested in getting involved in, maybe just talking to a fellow classmate. Um, And then also I think attending different Um, workshops or kind of events sometimes schools have for showing you all the different areas of things you can get involved in is something to watch out for because it's it's sometimes not until you see something you're really passionate about that you're willing to kind of step out more of your comfort zone to get involved in that. So making sure that you're watching the different, uh, the different online platforms or kind of the, like events that are going on that are telling you all the different opportunities that you can get involved in is important because you could find something that you click with a bit more um, than a group that you're not so passionate about. Okay. And um, do you mind sharing if you had a competitive GPA and what your approach was to maintaining good grades in undergrad and throughout your master's? So I have to be completely honest, when I first started undergrad, um, like my first set of midterms were horrible. Like I I did like fine. I got probably like 70s. It wasn't great. Like I had never gotten those marks before. And I remember like this like phone call. I was on um, talking to my mom and I was like, I don't think I'm cut out for university. Like I am just drowning here. So Um, that was such a, like, I think pivotal point in my undergrad in terms of like pursuing a high GPA, because I thought that, that just because I had gotten one poor mark on a test that I wasn't used to, that I couldn't move forward. And so I think, um, resilience is like an important key for like keep having a high GPA because having a high GPA doesn't mean you have a high mark on every single test. It means that if you get a low mark on a test, you put in that extra work and that you seek out help and you reflect on like what did work in my studying, what didn't work in my studying. And then you move forward from that um, because there's always going to be resistance that you're going to encounter. So figuring out how you study best for each subject and spending that extra time talking with your instructors, um, 
going to a couple extra study groups really um, allows you to kind of bounce back from those um, lower marks or even just like a low class. So I think um, you have to have that long-term perseverance in order to keep up those high grades because it is like a long haul. And so I think that would be the biggest piece of advice I have for striving for a high GPA. What were your healthcare experience hours that uh, qualified you to apply to U of T? So I got the majority of my hours working as a um, medical assistant, medical receptionist at a family practice. And so I worked there part-time throughout my master's. And then I continued to work there the second year when I was applying to schools uh, because I I had missed that application deadline um, during uh, my master's. So I had a year in between. So I got more hours through that. So two years experience with that. And then I also had the opportunity to go overseas uh, with a um, family friend who is a registered nurse to observe healthcare in Malawi. And so I was at a clinic every day for three weeks. So I got some hours there as well, but the majority of my hours came from working at a, at the clinic. And I think that was really great because it just allowed me to be exposed to the medical field a little bit more and just hear the terminology, even if I had no idea that was what was going on and just uh, interact with patients. And I also really came to learn the importance of communication with patients in terms of even just like relaying met- short messages from doctors over and working with the other res- receptionist and just seeing the process within the medical field, like how referrals work um, and what different specialists are, because I didn't have much exposure before then. I think that was a really great opportunity for me to get feet wet. And this was direct paid patient care experience? Yes. Okay. How did you come across that opportunity or apply for that job? Did it require certifications? Was there a special connection? Were you a volunteer beforehand? Um, so I connected there because um, my mom like knew the family physician and they, she said that they were hiring at the time and I was coming home from out west. So I was having a hard time looking for jobs. I was in another province um, because I couldn't really come in to apply anywhere. So everything had to be online. So it was just such a really great fit. Um, and I also want, knew I wanted to work part time while I was doing my master's, but I just didn't know where. So it just kind of all fell into place. Um, I know some of those positions require like a certificate for medical terminology, which I think would have been helpful like for me to do if it required it because we had to take a medical terminology class at the beginning of um, our program, but it didn't require that or anything. And so um, having that connection was how I secured the job. But since then, I've looked at different positions that are similar just because I was curious if other places required. And sometimes they do require um, those kind of certificates. Sometimes they don't. So it really just depends on the place. Any tips for pre-PA students on how to approach obtaining um, healthcare experience hours that would make them stand out on PA admissions? I think the the opportunity that you have to get direct patient care is really valuable. Uh, I think that's um, kind of posed as like a, a bit more valuable as opposed to indirect patient care because you do get a bit more exposure to the field. And then you also have opportunity and time to just practice like chat, chatting with patients, which I think is really important because that's something you're going to have to develop right off the bat in PA school when you're starting to learn how to take medical histories. So learning how to develop rapport and um, be comfortable and also how to handle yourselves in emergency situations or something that's um, out of your comfort zone is something that I think can come from direct patient experience. But our, like our incoming class had a really a diverse range of um, areas that people collected their hours. So I really don't think that one area is necessarily better than the other. Um, and it, I think it can depend on the individual as well um, and maybe other volunteer opportunities that they've had that can supplement some of those skills. And um, during COVID-19, it's been a little bit more challenging for people to acquire healthcare experience hours. Any suggestions on what they can do to try to gain experience during this time? Yeah, that's a great question. It's definitely challenging. I've, I've seen a lot of students asking about that. Um, and I know, thankfully, uh, U of T like, has adjusted their emissions criteria, so you don't have to have the same number of hours, which is really great. 
Um, but I think you just need to get a bit creative in terms of where those opportunities lie. I think there's been some opportunities to be involved in like COVID screening, which I think would count as direct patient care. Um, always though, you can email the admissions directly if you're curious if it counts or not, um, they'll let you know. Um, but yeah, that opportunity um, or also too, I'm really vouching for this type of job, but there, there are lots of opportunities, but I've seen some openings for medical like assistants still because those jobs are still needed. So if you uh, see those, you're welcome to apply for those as well because those count uh, for direct hours.